Hello, it is October 5th, 2022, and this is Thoughts from the Word. Well, hello, and welcome back to Thoughts from the Word. Today, I'm going to flip things around a little bit, and let's start by hearing about uh, uh, Fanny Crosby. So, uh, let me share this with you from, this is from uh, Ruth Tucker's book called Sacred Stories. It's about missionaries and, and hymn writers and pastors throughout, throughout history and how the Lord has used them. Some scholars have speculated on the basis of comments Paul made elsewhere that his thorn in the flesh was a problem with his eyesight. Whatever it was, it, apparently, it was apparently what most people would regard as a deterrent to ministry. For Paul, however, it became a strength. For Fanny Crosby, the thorn in the flesh truly was related to eyesight. She became blind as an infant and, the, and lived the rest of her life in physical darkness. Yet even as a child, she recognized the strength she had in weakness. This was a truth she styled in verse. How many blessings I enjoy that other people don't. To weep and sigh because I'm blind, I cannot nor I won't. She was convinced that God had permitted her blindness so that she could more faithfully serve him by writing thousands of hymns. Indeed, her hymns have become a priceless treasure to the church. Hymns of the Christian faith, such as Blessed Assurance, and I am thine, O Lord. Hymns of invitation, such, such as Pass me not, O gentle Savior. And hymns of missionary challenge, such as Rescue the Perishing. Rescue the Perishing was written after Fanny had been moved by the story of a down and, out, uh, down and outer converted at a rescue mission. The second verse of that song illustrates the urgency of the task of reaching such individuals. Plead with them earnestly. Plead with them gently. He will forgive if only they believe. And the third verse offers the glorious new life that can result from such earnest and gentle pleading. Down in the human heart, crushed by the tempter, feelings lie buried that grace can restore. Touched by a loving heart, weakened by kindness, cords that are broken will vibrate once more. Fanny Crosby's hymns were sung as early as the 1870s at D.L. Moody's evangelistic meetings and have been sung ever since at camp meetings, conferences, and church services. They have strengthened the faith of believers and have opened the way to faith in Christ for those who have not believed. Amen. Well, let's look at a verse out of the book of Corinthians today, 2 Corinthians chapter two chapter 12. We're going to look at verses 7 through 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. I've put it up on the screen for you. Hear now the word of the Lord. So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly in my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. Amen. Amen. Well, Paul here is writing to the church at Corinth, words of, uh, of encouragement. And what he's sharing with them is that all of us who are believers in Christ will have those things, those incidents, those times, or those afflictions that will come that will seem to be harassing, that will seem to be debilitating and keep us from, from doing the ministry. But Paul saw this as a thorn in his flesh. And if you've ever had a thorn, you know it's 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 irritating. It's painful. It causes you to itch and the scratch, and, and and it hurts, and you want it out. But at the same time, it doesn't cause death. You know, it it it, it is a, an annoyance. It may be a hindrance. A palm, you know, a thorn in your palm would make it difficult to hold things, and so you may not carry things or whatnot until you get relief. And the picture here is that he had this thorn, this this whatever it was, this affliction that was annoying. 
and and to many would have prevented them from doing the work. He saw it as just a hindrance. He prayed three times. He pleaded with the Lord to remove it, but God reminded him of this, and we must remember, just as Fanny Crosby did, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. God wants us to trust him, even with those afflictions, even with those trials, even with those thorns in the flesh, to trust him. His grace is sufficient, and his power is made perfect in the weakness. For when we overcome those or find our way around the obstacle, then we can, uh, then we can be more fruitful for the ministry of Christ. I used to have a campus ministry that used to tell us all the time that there aren't, we don't have any problems in our ministry. We have obstacles. And the, the, the goal for us as, as faithful servants is to figure out how to overcome that obstacle. An obstacle is just something in the way. It's not a preventative. It doesn't, it doesn't keep you from doing it. It hinders you, slows you down, but you can get past it. And Christ says we get past it by these two things, by his grace and power that are found in him. His grace is sufficient and his power is made perfect in that weakness, meaning it's made even better for it demonstrates his strength so that Paul then goes on. Therefore, because of that, that grace and power, I will, mo I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. He says, I will, I will revel in those i will see those as fanny crosby saw her blindness as a gift in order to be a to to be able to write her hymns and to see the world in a different way we should see those hindrances and afflictions we have also as god's gift to us though a thorn we may see it as a feel it as a thorn in the flesh it is a gift to demonstrate god's power and god's grace and we should bless the lord in that for he is showing his grace and his mercy in us well, think about that today as you go through your day and you're struggling and wondering and asking yourself, and I have to ask myself the same thing, how am I going to make it? I will make it by grace, God's grace because it is sufficient. It's all I need. And his power will give me strength even in this weakness, and it's perfected by this weakness where it shows me how to turn and to rely upon Christ. Well, let's close our time in prayer. Father, we thank you for being with us today. May we see the sufficiency of your grace and the never-ending power of God at work in us. O oh Lord, perfect your, your power in us that we would show and, and tell others of the grace, the mercy, and the love of Jesus Christ in our lives, our lives. Be with us today and be glorified in us. Show us your strength. Show us your wisdom. Show us your guidance. Show us, your, uh, you, show us you, O God, that we may draw nearer to you increase our faith and make us to be the men and women of God you desire us to be for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you for being with me today. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow as we gather together for some thoughts from the Word. Mm -hmm.